Hi and welcome to Accordion Cafe. Today we're looking at a Zanussi vacuum cleaner, a bagless cleaner. It's a ZAN1832. Uh, 2 kilowatts, 2000 watt motor. If you've got a bit more information, the type is SL246G and the model again is a ZAN1832. Uh, there's a product number here as well. Uh, 900-257-575. This is a 220, 232, 40 volt cleaner. Um, so now we're just going to start uh, taking it apart. If your cleaner is not picking up very well, the first thing to suspect is that your uh, bagless container is full. So on this, you just slide this switch back, the latch back, and pull the container out. And there we have the way you empty it. You just you push the top of that orange button there. So here we are over the bin and we'll just see if this little system works. Press the little latch here and sure enough that all just drops out the bottom. No problem at all. Now the next thing we want to do is to take the filter out. To take the filter out of this we simply hold the container, give the filter a twist to the left like that and remove the filter and there we have more and more muck comes out now this filter here all you've got to do is give it a tap on the side of your rubbish bag and clean it like that so here we are outside on the wall When you're happy enough, you can then put your filter back in the container. And just simply place it in, turn it clockwise until it clips over, and you'll see the little orange bar here go over. I'll just unlock that again to show you. If you watch that little orange thing there, see that? Put it back in. Turn it clockwise, there. and watch the orange lever. There it is. That's locked in place. And there we are. That's ready to be put back in the cleaner now. Not as clean as I'd like it to be, but clean enough for this video. So to disconnect this pipe, squeeze on the two parts. There's one that side, and there's one this side. When you're using these vacuum cleaners. Make sure that the um, recall, the self recall is all the way out because um, if you use these with that on your part way out because the lead is coiled it uh, forms a magnetic flux and that flux causes resistance and it can make the coiled lead become very hot and actually melt and fuse it together that will uh, be a fire risk and it's expensive to get it replaced. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take the body off. We're going to start by removing one, two, three, four screws. These are Phillips screws and they're not too tight. And when you put these vacuum cleaners back together and be sure that you don't over tighten these screws because once the thread's gone so just to get things out of the way um, we'll remove this um, exhaust filter cover and just push that in well like that and away it comes and we're going to lift tip the vacuum cleaner up slightly now so make sure that you take all your four screws out of the holes inside here so that you don't lose them when you tip it up so the next thing I'm going to do now is remove the wheels. And these wheels, all you simply do is put a screwdriver or something to leave them off with. The next thing we're going to take out, before we do any 
pulling off of edges or anything like that is to remove a little red circular cover there it's only very small and you'll need to poke something in the top of it if you haven't got anything small enough we'll improvise get a fork bend the prong and stick it in the hole and out it comes and there we are look inside this hole here you'll see it has a Phillips screw down there very craftily hidden not very tight it's quite loose actually so remove that screw now at the moment <coughs> so far uh, we've removed four screws from inside the uh, dust compartment we've removed our exhaust filter and the two wheels now so far you'll find the case still won't come off once again we've got to do a little bit of easing off of the plastic parts now at the back of the machine here pull out or spring up the back of the case there and the same the other side after we've removed these two tabs we've got them out of the way now you can pull up the top now that's come off very easily this top has come off extremely easy so don't be fooled by that and there we are now <coughs> you can get the if you need to um, replace your lead if it's got damage and it needs replacing you can get at your uh, recoil and we'll just have a look at that recoil now how it works Coil spring to show you how it works well obviously without how it works just pull that in and let it go and it stays there until you push the button and it brings it back in but the way it works is this inside here there's a coil spring and if you've never seen them before um, it's like the sort of spring you find in the clock in the clockwork so there we have a coil spring it's already under tension uh, so don't go trying to just really yank this out because it'll spring all over the place and <coughs> when you pull the lead out here you can see it comes off this ball and as you're pulling it so you're pulling even more it's winding this spring up even more so how does it stop when you pull it so far and it stays there well that's a little bit of magic in this little rubber wheel here what happens is when you pull this out so the drum moves clockwise because it's coming off the bottom of the reel moves clockwise and you'll see that wheel move in a clockwise you'll see the whole wheel um, move in the clockwise direction I don't mean turning I mean actually move up can you see the little shaft moving to the right okay now that shaft moves the wheel up with the direction because it's got a corrugator a, a um, knurled surface on this wheel here and the wheel just turns but when you let go of the lead what happens is the wheel comes down and it is jammed along the side here into this V shape so it gets tighter and tighter as it comes down until it can't come down any further and it jams the wheel it stops it coming out so there we are, that's coming out and let go of the lead you can see it comes down and jams down now the way the release works is when you push the foot um, pedal on the top of the casing which is here you see the symbol for the plug and the lead when you push down on that there we have it underneath there's the spring this is upside down at the moment this then pushes on this lever here which pushes down pivots there thus lifting the, um, the jockey wheel or the braking wheel out the way of this watch so when we push this down so it closes up it, it winds up the lead because the spring is now pulling it back anti-clockwise and there we have it that's the way it works it locks you push this down and that's how your recoil works
So there we are. The printed circuit board here. You can see where your mains comes in here on this brown lead. It goes to your suppressor or capacitor for smoothing and interference. There's also resistors, those little things there with the coloured bands on. Those are carbon resistors, uh, ceramic resistors, there's a diode. Uh, diodes, I should say, there's two diodes. There's uh, a, a, a possibly a triac transistor there. And uh, a couple of um, small wire wands there. That's all for voltage to control and uh, setting the speed from the speed on the motor. And over here is your on and off switch. So you have your um, main supply here coming in through the on off switch. The single pole switch that is. And down to the motor. And over here is the other leads from the motor as well. This goes down to this circuit board and so on around and around it goes and basically that is really about it on your vacuum cleaner um, the only reason really why you, why, you, why you would want to take this apart if the motor's gone if it's burnt out i would uh, throw it in the bin basically unless it's under guarantee it's not worth it it's not worth the trouble these are these are almost a disposable item, a very expensive disposable item. But you know, uh, if it's under guarantee, take it back. If it's not, chuck it in the bin. The only real worthwhile reason for stripping these down really would be to do your recoil, or perhaps um, do the on and off switch. And that's really about it. We'll put our top back on. Pushing back down into place I'm working one handed at the moment I want to work two handed I think these parts are back in properly because if they're not they'll be sticking out it's just a question of getting these tabs in the right place here we'll just take this off again and have a look you can see there's a, a latch on here, a latching part just there, and on here. And these have to go into there and there. I suppose. And put our four screws back inside and uh, tighten our screw in the top, which was covered, remember? A hidden screw by that little pimple thing, not too tight, just enough. There's our little red bit which goes in the top. And we'll just replace our four screws which we've kept here. in the four corners of the dust compartment right and we'll just put our filter back on two little pivoting logs on this side there going there that fits on there like that and then our dust collector and filter fits in there there's our little catch there to hold that in place there and there we are now we can just give it a quick test and make sure we're working all right now remember when you're going to use these machines make sure you pull all the lead out otherwise as I said before you'll cause a magnetic field and magnetic fields will cause have a resistance they cause heat and heat um, causes problems so there we are and we'll just give it a turn it on the wall first <laughs> 